Gene Gallon with the Chatham Journal, and I'm with the North Carolina Insurance Commissioner, Mike Causey. We're here at Burley's with a bunch of fire dignitaries. Did you count the number of people coming in as to, are we over the limit? I think it's 114. I unfortunately was not counting because the chicken looks so good. The chicken looks so good. Well, we appreciate Mike visiting us here. Um, you stopped off at Bennett, you went to the Pittsburgh Fire Department, you're also the North Chatham Volunteer Fire Department, and you're also meeting with the insurance agents within the area. Tell us a little bit about your visit here in Chatham County. What, what have you found, and is this something you do on a regular basis? It is something we do on a regular basis. Every week I try to get out and visit some of the counties to uh, visit with as many fire departments as we can within the county. And Chatham County is such a diverse county. As you know, we, we've covered a, a wide path from, from uh, Bennett, which is right, really, you're covering about three counties there, right? Randolph, Moore, and Chatham. And Bennett is very efficient because if you look at the budgets as far as all fire departments, their budget, as I understand, it's lower than any other fire department in Chatham County. Right. So they're doing a more with less, doing a lot with a small budget, and then we had the opportunity to, to visit the county seat, Pittsburgh, and see their fire department that is run by the county, volunteer fire department, and all the tremendous growth around Pittsburgh and with the Chatham Park development and all of that, how, how it strains the resources of the fire department and the tremendous need that the Pittsburgh Fire Department has. And of course, you go to Bennett, Pittsburgh, you tell them you're going to North Chatham, they're going to make jokes about going to the wealthy end of the county. Right. And, and you go to North Chatham and realize the tremendous area that they serve, uh, even in the Alamance County, and the, uh, the, the number of stations and the number of personnel. They have over 50 firefighters that work with that department. So it, it, they're doing a lot of construction around North Chatham now to upgrade the, the parking facilities and the drainage. But it's just an honor for me to be able to go out and meet face to face with our uh, volunteers, the firefighters, the fire chiefs. Had an opportunity to meet with the police chief in Pittsburgh, met with the county manager, and just, we met just some of the most down-to-earth people that live here in Chatham County. So, well, you're originally from Guilford County, aren't you? I still live in Guilford. I, I'm born and raised uh, in rural Guilford County. I live on the same farm where I grew up, and uh, that's where I continue to live today. Now, they told me not to ask this question, but I've got to because you've been married to your wife for 43 years. What's the secret? Can you tell us? S stay away from home while I'm working. <laughs> Stay on the road. There, there you go. Um, is this something you go out and see folks in the county, different counties on a regular basis? Yes, we do that every, practically every week, uh, uh, one day a week. Uh, some, some weeks, this week for example, we're here in Chatham today, we'll be in Caldwell County on Thursday, so for two days this week I get to be out around the state talking to the people in fire departments, insurance agencies, and other, we regulate so many different things. We regulate collection agencies, bail bondsmen, we have law enforcement officers, we do criminal investigations, we, uh, we even inspect uh, car washes and ATM machines. So wow. Who would think that's going to be done by Department of Insurance? We have 25 divisions. Uh, within the department, only five of those divisions are insurance divisions. We're, we're the chief building inspector for the state, and you know how much building is taking place in Chatham County. So we're over engineering codes, the state building code council, and all of those things. And you can't build anything in a county without getting the plans approved by the Department of Insurance. So it's a big area of responsibility 
One thing we do, I think people don't realize, is that we're in charge of risk management for the state of North Carolina. Right? That means every building that the state owns, every piece of property that the state owns, that the people own, is under our responsibility for insurance and uh, making sure they're properly insured. We have to make sure the employees of our university system are covered for liability insurance. So uh, risk management is a, is a big area. Uh, as insurance commissioner and elected officer, I also work with those to be we meet every month as part of the Council of State, so the Insurance Commissioner, Attorney General, Agriculture Commissioner, those other eight elected offices serve with the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, to vote every month on state issues. If any property is bought or sold or leased has to be voted on by the Council. Now, how do you land up being, you're doing all this other stuff, you're wearing all these hats, how do you land up also being the state fire marshal, and do you have a state fire marshal hat? Yes, we have a, a helmet and a badge. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the Department of Insurance started in 1899, and in the late 40s, I believe 1949, was when the legislature put the Office of State Fire Marshal under the responsibility and domain of the Commissioner of Insurance. So. Uh, it's, it's an honor and a privilege for me to serve as state fire marshal and insurance commissioner. And that's why living in rural North Carolina, as I do, we, we all depend on our volunteer fire departments. People don't realize that volunteers are the backbone of the fire service. 70% of our fire departments are volunteer, but 90% of our fire departments depend on volunteers. And uh, what do you see as needing improvement on the fire volunteer fire department? Are there things that you, as commissioner, can can help with? How, how's recruitment on the volunteer fire department arena? Well, I think one of the biggest problems that the volunteer fire departments face is uh, recruiting. Uh, now we're fortunate in Chatham County; the population here is much better than some of our rural counties with, with little population. So you have uh, a good group of volunteers coming up out of high school, waiting to join. I'd like to see more high schools get involved with a junior firefighter program as we have in some of the other counties. Uh, funding's always an issue. Every fire department, particularly volunteer fire departments, the majority of those need help in funding which we provide uh, grants, state grants. In fact, Bennett Fire Department this morning, we just got news today, our grants are being announced. So we just learned this morning that the Bennett Fire Department qualified for one of our state grants. And I believe that grant was in excess of $10,000. So I congratulate the Bennett Fire Department on their efforts to uh, achieve this grant money. What do you learn, or what's the most important thing you take away from these visits to different counties? And, and you're meeting with insurance agents, you're also meeting with fire departments, so public safety folks. What do you come away with as commissioner? What, is, what does Mike come back to the office in Raleigh and say, this is what I learned when I was out on a visit? Well, you learn something everywhere you go. Uh, every, uh, every area have, is a little different geographically, but they basically have the same needs to serve the community. And we have like our fire marshals here with us today, uh, Tom, and you know, he has a great handle on every fire department in this county, as all county fire marshals do. But you realize uh, it's more than a job, it's a brotherhood, and it's it's a high risk, high stress type job. It's something that when, when you're, they just, they put their life on the line when they go out on the call. They're risking their life for the community. And you have uh, firefighters that 
they're not following a nine to five schedule. They're on call 24 hours a day. At some stations, you may have shifts, and you may be working a day shift for two or, two or three days. You may, it did take off two or three days. Then you may come back and work a night shift. How many times have you been out to a restaurant and you seen police officers or firefighters come in and order a meal, they get a call? They never get to take the first bite because they've got to go out on that call. And you look at some of the stress factors, like suicide rates. We just had a seminar in Charlotte a few weeks ago uh, to, to address uh, the firefighter suicide. And suicides with uh, the fire service is 10 times higher than the general population. Uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, that's a very high incident with, with the firefighters. So we're doing what we can at the Office of the State Fire Marshal. I have our chief here today, Brian Taylor, with the Office of the State Fire Marshal. He came up through the ranks of the volunteer fire departments. He was fire marshal for the city of Albemarle for 25 years. So uh, we're just doing what we can to help. All right, um, let's step outside of Chatham County. You've been in this position for two years. Um, what are your biggest accomplishments over the last two years? And what do you see as the, uh, as the remaining challenges in your position? Well, not quite two years. I'm, I'm now in my second year. All right. So uh, I've been 15, 16 months since, since January 1st, 2017. But uh, biggest accomplishments, I think, one, we, we, I brought in Brian Taylor, who came out of the fire service to head up offices of the state fire marshal. He has really turned around the uh, communications and made our office of state fire marshal more user friendly. We've got a better working relationship with the uh, builders and the developers and the fire marshal community. Uh, I think my biggest accomplishment has been in criminal investigations. We have doubled our investigations capability in the past year. You know, we've gone from 20 sworn law enforcement officers when I took office to uh, about 40 sworn law enforcement officers today. We've added attorneys to work with district attorneys to help prosecute arson cases and insurance fraud cases around the state. And we've helped the uh, consumer services side reach out and help consumers uh, quicker and better when, the, when people have a claim, a dispute with an insurance company or they're trying to get a claim settled. So my message is we're here to help whatever we can do to help, help you or the people that you know or your family. Uh, give us a call, go to our website, ncdoi.com, and they'll give you more detail. Well, it sounds like you were understaffed and you're being able to get the numbers up. When you, when you say criminal investigations, are you, you're talking about investigating both insurance situations and fire situations? Correct. We, criminal invest, we get, there's a lot of insurance fraud that takes place. Okay. And uh, when I came into this office, that's the first place I went was to our criminal investigators. And it was way worse than I thought it was. We get every month 400 to 500 criminal complaints, mostly from insurance companies. These are serious criminal matters that need investigation to determine if an arrest is needed. So you have to have sworn law enforcement officers to do this. So we get 4,500 criminal complaints a month. That's almost 5,000 a year. When I took office, we only had enough sworn officers to investigate 12%. Ooh. That was way too low. So last year we made 334 arrests in this state. That was 60% better than the previous year under my predecessor. I believe this year we're going to double what we did last year. We recovered last year over $14 million for consumers. So we're paying for fraud. I 
mean, every dollar that we pay for insurance premiums, you're, you're paying somewhere between 15 and 20 cents of that dollar is going to cover fraud. So if you don't get tough on fraud and go after the crooks, we're all going to be paying more and more for insurance. So my job is to hold down insurance rates, keep these insurance companies financially solvent, and help the consumer in any way we can. Uh, one last question. You, uh, I know you're, you're trying to make things easier to be done. You're trying to cut back on the bureaucracy. It was mentioned that North Carolina is one of the only states that has a rate bureau. Can you explain to folks what a rate bureau is and the good sure. or, or the bad or the bad or the good of rate bureau? Well, sure. The rate bureau is something that was created by the legislature, our North Carolina General Assembly, and it was created to address a problem we had decades ago. Uh, it's called assigned risk, and we're, we're, the insurance rates were way out of kilter. They charged different rates for men and women, boys and girls. So if you were a young male driver, your rates was two or three times what a female driver was. So when they created the rate bureau, they changed all that to make a uniform rate where men and women pay the same rates. But the rate bureau is uh, it's some good and some bad. It's, uh, some people have called it more like a dictatorship, a cartel, because it is a representation of the insurance industry. So we don't have the same free market as some of our other states have. But having said that, the rate bureau has created uh, stability over the years. So when you look at the stability factor, we have some of the lowest automobile insurance rates on average in the whole country. There's only one or two states that have lower uh, car insurance rates than we do. Our homeowners rates, even though some people complain about homeowners rates, we, we are uh, about 23, I think we're 23rd uh, lowest in the country, and we're one of the lowest in the southeast. Some of the highest states for homeowners are Florida, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Oklahoma, so they're uh, southeastern states. We are working to uh, work, we work with the rate bureau. We've done a lot of things to give insurance companies more flexibility so they can do things uh, outside of the rate bureau. The, the political climate is just not there to completely do away with the rate bureau, so we're, we're looking at ways to bring about more free market ways that insurance companies can uh, come to this state and like business. We're also looking at modernizing our whole insurance system. Right. Uh, actually, one, one last question. Uh, this afternoon, probably in about 40 minutes, you're heading over uh, and you're going to be talking with the insurance agents in this community. Why, what kind of things do you discuss in those kind of meetings? We just don't like the question you just asked. Some, of, some folks ask us about the rate bureau. We get a lot of questions about something called consent to rate, where insurance companies send a letter out and they need the policyholders consent to raise their rates. Uh, we have a lot of questions about what we do at the department as far as our agent services division, what help we can give to agents, what we help we can give to consumers. And so it's just uh, all types of questions. And the main thing is, as I said earlier, we're here to help. If it, you're an insurance agent, you're an insurance company, you're a consumer, we're here to help. So whatever we can do to help answer your question and make your job easier or your life easier, that's what we're here for. Well, thank you, folks. We've been talking to Mike Causey. He is the North Carolina State Insurance Commissioner and the State Fire Marshal. And we're here in Burley's enjoying some lunch, and he's going to go. He's just visiting with folks to see what's going on in Chatham County. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Me. Thank you for having me.